All right, welcome back to our class. We're looking today at the eighth chapter, so we're halfway through um, our third semester. And again, we're looking at uh, the church throughout the semester. This chapter is on the names and images that we might hear of the church. This will be really helpful for us to clarify because I think a lot of times we hear these images used a lot throughout the readings at church. Different titles, body of Christ, the bride of Christ, you know, the church is a sacrament. We hear these different titles, and sometimes we're not exactly sure what they mean, or St. Paul might use them, for example, in his letters almost interchangeably, and we get confused. I know I was confused growing up a lot of times. What does it mean, the body of Christ? And is it the body of Christ or the bride of Christ? And, you know, those kinds of things. So we're going to just kind of nail some of these down. The first one, just as a review, one of the names or images of the church is an image of the church as a sacrament, which we've already talked about just a few weeks ago. But just wanted to go back over that again because we can't hear something enough uh, if we're trying to remember it or learn it. And so, again, remembering that a sacrament is something that both is a sign of something, but also is that thing. Uh, and, and, and we believe that the church, in a, in a way, functions as a sacrament or is like a sacrament because it is both a sign of the salvation that God wants to give to us. Why is it a sign of that? Because literally everyone is welcome to it. And again, we're using that image of the world of World Youth Day that many of you are on, that idea that we have every every body, every nation, every tribe, etc., uh, on, on the world in the world is a part of the church, and that then being a sign that in fact the salvation is extended to all people, not just as a sign to the church, but actually that the church is that salvation that Christ is hoping to give to us. So it's a sign of it because everyone's welcome, but it also is that salvation that Christ is, is wanting to bring, particularly through the sacraments, the other seven, the, the major seven sacraments that the church gives. That's the salvation that the church is to the world. Okay, another title that we've talked about already, the church is the mystical body of Christ. Okay, what does that mean? Um, again, remembering that we hear when we talk about the church as the body of Christ, it's at, in relation to um, the fact that all the different parts of the body um, are, are sort of work under or, um, you know, sort of take their cue from the head. And so Christ is described by St. Paul in the scriptures as being the head of the body, um, but that we make up the body. So we all function together in some ways as one. And some of us, we all have, as again, we were looking at a few weeks ago, we all have different roles to play, different parts of the body. We all have different gifts. And some, you know, sometimes I think we, we may lament the fact that, you know, some people get more credit or some people get more public, you know, uh, accolades or some people just have a bit more gifts than I do or the gifts that I want, I don't have, but that person has them in the body of Christ. Um, it's realizing that everybody literally has a part to play in the body of Christ. Everyone belongs and everyone's role is equally important in the eyes of God. It might not be equally important in the eyes of the public, but the, 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 the uh, poor person um, you know, uh, who's working uh, in the third world somewhere, um, their role has the same, in the body of Christ, has the same dignity as, as Pope Francis. Every role has, God loves and, and sees all of us having equal dignity. So we all have different parts to play, but we should never get upset that our part isn't bigger, uh, basically is kind of the, the takeaway from that. But again, one of the titles or images of the church or names of the church is that it's the body of Christ, the mystical body of Christ. Now, we also have a different title, again, for the church, which is similar, it seems similar, but it actually can cause confusion. The church is the bride of Christ as well. Sometimes the scriptures refer to the church in that way. Um, we have always used feminine language for the church, all the way going back to the very beginning, referred to as the church is her or she. You know, we refer to the church that way. Why? Because that idea that the church is married to Christ, that Christ is the, the husband, and that the church functions as the bride, we all are the body of Christ, or the, the, the bride of Christ in that way. So, if we're thinking of everything, in some sense, we are all united with Christ. So there's, in, in, in one image of, of the church, we are all one. Christ, us, everybody else, we all fit together as one. The difference there is a different image um, is one where there are two bodies, where there's Christ's body, and then there is all of us that make up the church, and we all appear to Christ as the bride. We, we are the bride of Christ. So 
We use that all the time where we use different metaphors to explain the same thing. And those metaphors are not exactly the same or they may not even be totally compatible um, as metaphors, right? So, I mean, you can't really have everybody be one body and then also have a, a, a Christ be the bride and us. But again, we're not, they're, they're, they're different ways of explaining the reality that's present in us. And so, again, when we're thinking of everything as one body, we should remember, we should think that that has truth to it. And of course, we are all one body with Christ as our head. But then also we are two bodies. Um, and uh, it, that, that is another way of understanding our relationship to Christ, that you and I and everyone else in the world make up, that make up the church. We are the bride uh, and Christ is the bridegroom, the groom um, who is married to us. And so in that way, but either way, there's unity there because what are bride and groom that are married? What happens with a bride and groom? What are they asked to do? They're asked to become one body. And they're asked to become one. That's what the sacrament of marriage does. So even though in that two-body image where Christ and, and the church are married to one another, even that then is supposed to, in a sense, be a one-body image. Husband and wife are asked to become one. And in fact, marriage is asked to be holy because it shows the world how Christ loves the church. So husband and wife are asked in their marriage uh, preparation and the actual wedding itself and some of the prayers. Husbands and wives are asked to, even by St. Paul, uh, husbands and wives are asked to love each other in such a way that the rest of the world sees this radical love between husband and wife, this radical giving of myself, this radical no longer doing exactly what I want to do all the time, uh, but instead living for and serving the other in that service, the, the, the rest of the world is supposed to see something radically different in Christian marriage that's taking place. And so when they see that, they're supposed to then see the same way in which Christ and the church are married together so intensely that we actually become not two, but one. Right? So marriage has a vocation of showing the world what it is and how it is that Christ and the church love each other. And so what an amazing thing. Marriage is when you live marriage with the idea that I'm married in order to get what I need out of this relationship. I'm married to this, the, my wife, for example, only for or mostly for her giving me what I need. Marriage falls apart almost instantly in that scenario. But when I realize that my marriage exists so that I may serve the other person, that's when marriage thrives. And that's when also marriage, again, is a great sign to the rest of the world um, about how Christ and the church love each other uh, as well. So, something to aim for if you feel God is calling you to the vocation of marriage. All right, another beautiful image or name of the church is the church is the family of God. Now we're sort of talking about all of us as individual bodies in one sense, right? Um, because now we're talking about God the Father, we're talking about God the Son, and that fact that you and I as individuals are all invited in to live and become part of the family of God. And that's what the church is. The church is then, in that image, a collection of a, a bunch of people, right? All individual people in that sense. Why? Because God is literally our Father. We are ta it talks about in the scriptures how we are literally adopted into the family of God. We are literally adopted into the Trinity. So we have in heaven, before the creation of the world, we have God and the, God the Father and God the Son loving each other so intensely and that love back and forth is the Holy Spirit. Now, once Christ comes, becomes a human being, and then the Holy Spirit comes down on us, now the Father is also loving us through the Spirit in the same way and looks at us in the same way that he looks at his Son. Even though we were not originally there because we were created, we are still now brought into and adopted into the family of God, and that is another title for the church. All the people, the collection of all the people that, that, that are living and striving to live as an adopted son or daughter of Christ. But the beautiful thing, or adopted son or daughter of the Father. The beautiful thing there is that the Father looks on us in the same way that he looks on his son. And if you, I mean, if you ever stop to just let that sink in, God the Father loves you with the same intensity and the same love 
that he loves Jesus Christ, his son. Do you, do you, do you believe that? Do you think about that? Um, that? You could sit around and think about that for the rest of your life, that God the Father loves you in the same way that he loves his son, and still continue to just be blown away and amazed by that. So we are members of, in a sense, too, the church as is another image of the church is that we are all the family of God. Uh, and that is a beautiful thing to think about as well. So different images for the church. Um, okay, so some questions here. Pretty quick lesson this week. Number one, why is the church the sacrament of salvation? So kind of a review question there, but again, another title or image of the church. Why is the church t described sometimes as the sacrament of salvation? Number two, what does it mean to say that the church is the body of Christ? Number three, what does it mean to say that the church is the bride of Christ? And number four, what does it mean to say that the church is the family of God? Okay, so those three, uh, those four images, just explain those a little bit to, uh, to us, and we'll call it a day. I hope that you have a great week, and again, as always, know that I'm praying for you. Call if I can ever help with anything. God bless.